safe streets, vibrant neighborhoods, successful business and commerce. These are things that make a healthy community. We are a diverse community, rural, suburban, urban, a multitude of languages and ethnicities, ages and experiences. We are a collaborative community. Public-private partnerships make us a model community that others want to follow. It is what makes us unique. It is what makes us strong. The employees of Kent County reflect our diversity and seek to serve our communities. People in this county, in this area, we wrap our arms around each other. We come together to collaborate, to solve problems. Um, we're all working for the good of the whole. And I think that's wonderful. And you can see it. You can see it as you drive around Kent County. Our impact starts the day a baby is born and a birth certificate is issued, to protecting children from deadly diseases through vaccination, to the public safety and justice provided by law enforcement and the courts, to offering veteran services and caring for the elderly. Every day we work to keep our communities robust. I think if you are somebody who is interested in serving your community, in building a strong knowledge base and a good group of people to work with, then the county is one of your best employment opportunities out there. It's been completely rewarding in every way I could possibly explain for 26 years and I feel like I grow every single day still today. Leading these dedicated employees are 19 member board of commissioners and our county administrator controller, along with our elected officials and appointed department directors, placing emphasis on civic involvement, quality housing, vibrant neighborhoods, and strong, solid infrastructure to allow businesses to thrive. Professional, dedicated, collaborative, and innovative. Behind the scenes, collaboration between foundations, charitable organizations, nonprofits, for-profit businesses, public sector demonstrated through the county, the city of Grand Rapids, the townships, all the cities and the villages in our area. If we don't come together, then we will not have the strength that we have today, and I only hope to build upon that. Our aim is to make our communities the best they can be. We are involved in exciting development projects, sustainable recycling programs, and creative progressive prevention programming. We partner with elected officials, impacting policy ideas that become great achievements. We seek opportunities to reach out into the community and offer our services to help our residents make Kent County thrive. Our relationship um, is solid, um, both from a staff standpoint at the county level, as well as the Board of Commissioners. And um, they understand what we do and the benefits that we can do for the community, and vice versa, we couldn't do what we do without the help of Kent County. While most of us are busy running our lives, Kent County's elected officials, administrator controller, and over 1,600 employees are serving the communities where we live our lives so we can all have a place we are proud to call home. Kent County, it's life well run. Good morning and happy new year. Today is Tuesday, January 12th. It's 8.33 a.m. We'll call this meeting of the Legislative and Human Resources Committee to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is public comment. Is there anyone here from the public who would like to address the committee this morning? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to next item on the agenda, approval of the minutes from our December 8th, 2015 meeting. Is there a motion to support the minutes? Move it. Okay, so a motion from Commissioner Vaughn and a support from Commissioner Corndike. Questions or comments on the motion? Okay, seeing, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next up on the agenda is uh, from the Board of Commissioners, appointment to the Board of Public Works. This is a recommend recommendation to the Board to appoint Commissioner Dan Korndike as the Board of Public uh, to the Board of Public Works to fill an unexpired term ending December 31st, 2017. Commissioner Roger Morgan has resigned from the Board of Public Works. As a result of this resignation, a commissioner vacancy has occurred. Board Chair Jim Saufeld and Vice Chair Shana Schroll are recommending the Board of Commissioners appoint Commissioner Dan Korndike to the Board of Public Works to fill an unexpired term ending December 31, 2017. Okay, is there a motion? So motion by Commissioner Matt, support. 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 Support by Commissioner Vaughn. Questions or comments on the motion? Commissioner Vaughn? Yeah, we're honored to have Don, Dan back on the uh, DPW board. Uh, 
going through a transition of members uh, next year, possibly, and uh, so we welcome uh, Dan with his experience back to that board, and uh, there's been a lot of changes since he's been on that board, so welcome back, Dan. We look forward to you serving on that board. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I will just echo those comments from Commissioner Vaughn. We look forward to seeing Dan Korndike back on Public Works. So with that being said, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Dan, welcome back to Public Works. Thank you. Okay. Next up on the agenda from Human Resources, Kent County Employees Retirement Plan. This is a request to recommend to the board to, to approve the restate attention plan document of the Kent County Employees Retirement Plan. The Kent County Employees Retirement Plan has been amended and restated from time to time since its adoption in 1948. The plan was last restated in 2008 and last amended in 2011. Governmental plans that are intended to comply with the IRS uh, Code uh, Section 401A and in accordance with Revenue Procedure 2012-50 have a deadline of January 31st, 2016 to restate their plans. The purpose of the restatement is to incorporate changes in the pension provisions as affected by collective bargaining, legislation, prior amendments, ambiguities identified in the existing plan document, to obtain a determination letter from the Internal Revenue Service regarding the plan's continued tax qualified status and to make any other changes. Specifically, the plan restated plan document has addressed <coughs> compliance with the following. Treasury uh, Regulation 1.45C to 2E34, Pension uh, Protection Act, the IRS uh, Revenue Ruling 2002-27, the Internal Revenue Code Section 414N, Uniformed Services Employment and Reemployment uh, Rights Act, the Repeal of, the De of Defense of Marriage Act uh, of Revenue Ruling, Internal Revenue Code Section 401A9 and <coughs> collective bargaining agreements between the counties and the unions. Uh, Frank Baradon, who is the counsel to the pension um, board, has prepared the restated document. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Mass. Is there support? Support. Support by Commissioner Kordyke. Questions or comments on motion? Commissioner Hesse. I'll start with something that's fairly easy. Um, this was marked up in, in black and blue and red and green, and I didn't necessarily understand what the significance of each of the colors and how it coded to this. We have Michelle Balcom from Middle and Johnson for this morning. Good morning, commissioners. Um, yeah, as far as the differentiation between the markup, um, <coughs> anything in red is strike through and has been deleted. Uh, in blue, you will see new text, and the green represents relocated text, but it is the same uh, text. It's just relocated to a new section. Any other questions? Commissioner Hennessy. Well, I was asking what a leased employee is where it's referred to in Section 201, and, I, and I'm still not sure that I understand what, a, what a constitutes a leased employee. That definition was updated uh, for internal revenue, and the I, I, I don't have the uh, necessarily all the information on what cons what every what may constitute a leased employee, but that definition likely doesn't apply to a governmental plan in the sense that we think of employees in part-time or temp coming from an agency. Uh, this is to make compliance with Internal Revenue Code and must be updated for us to be compliant, but the applicability to our plan is um, not likely to really be there. I can, I'm sorry, I would absolutely follow up with Frank Bairdon to get a full definition of uh, what may constitute a leased employee and under that Internal Revenue Code. Commissioner Matt. Thank you. I'm just wondering, could, could you talk a little bit more about the changes that are made in the credit for military? It's qualified military service. That's on page 19. 
Certainly. Um, military service is, we do provide for the purchase of military service for prior active duty service under the plan, as well as if a current employee is deployed and takes a leave for military service purposes. Uh, our plan under um, USERA uh, must comply and therefore for the period of time that an active employee is uh, deployed and in active duty, they have the ability to continue to accrue service under our plan provided. Um, but, but, but your first statement, if they've served three years or three years or whatever active duty, up to six years I think it is in here, they can purchase extra coverage then? I mean, if they've served six years prior to joining the staff, is that the way it works? There's two separate um, provisions that apply to military service. One is for prior service, that they're allowed to purchase up to five years of prior military service. And that would give them five years towards retirement for the county? Correct. And that's, that service credit only goes to the benefit calculation. It does not go to eligibility. And then on a separate note, if somebody is actively employed with us and is deployed, then they have the ability to continue to accrue service during their leave from the county while they're deployed with the military. Commissioner Talon. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm wondering if we could um, have a little clarification on the changes that were made, Daryl, the, the memo that you sent talked about. Um, concerns from an agent um, and that's not clear to me what happened there or what the concern was and whether that was changed so I appreciate that okay in the process of uh, preparing uh, the restated plan uh, there was notification made to um, uh, the the attorney and the union for the corrections officers and in doing so there was a request for additional information and we've had um, We've provided the changes to Allison Patton, attorney for the corrections officers, and we've had conference calls to discuss those changes and make modifications. And final, what we thought were final modifications were made last week, and um, over the weekend we received an email from Ms. Patton objecting to some of the language and wanting some additional clarification and changes. So that was um, over this past weekend, and then it was yesterday that we were working with Frank Bearden to make those changes, and unfortunately that occurred at the 11th hour. Can, uh, can you, is, is this all throughout the document, or can you point to a certain area where the, where the? No, there's two primary the areas. Um, it's going to be in Article 10, which, goes back to the disability provisions of the plan. And you may recall that the disability provisions um, have been a, a major topic of negotiations with the unions to uh, remove the non-duty benefit and replace it with the long-term uh, disability plan and to get clarification on the duty provisions in order to um, take care of some ambiguities and clarify language and ensure that operation and administration um, is, is clarified. It is in doing that and because the KCDSA, the Corrections Officers Union, has not settled and has not yet agreed to that, she just asked for that to be made more clear for both for their unit as well as the other unions who have not yet adopted those changes. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Hennessy. Appendix B, I take it, was added yesterday, and it's mostly in green, and so that means that, that those are additions being taken from what was earlier in the document. They're just being replaced to a new section? That Appendix B actually speaks to um, the objections from Allison Patton about um, making it more clear that those are the existing disability provisions under our current plan. And so because we have corrections officers as well as some other unions who have not yet adopted Article 10, the new language for disability, we are taking all the existing language from the plan document and putting it in Appendix B 
and the um, it is the goal to continue to negotiate with the unions who have not yet agreed to get everybody on the same language in Article 10 and therefore the existing provisions that still apply to those unions who have not yet accepted that is everything in Appendix B and that is just relocated text from our current plan document. So will that be updated again as everybody becomes on the same page in terms of the disability? There is language, the way that language is written in Article 10 is such that as, it, as they accept the changes and adopt the new language, Appendix B will just become obsolete after the unions adopt that. And then in our next restatement, we can eliminate the, that language altogether. And, and I think that one of the other changes that I'm, you know, seems to be reflected in here and in some of the communications we've received is that in some cases it's going to be more generic to, so that the agreements can, this document can change according to changes in collective bargaining agreements down the road. That's exactly right. A collective bargaining agreement always supersedes uh, my legal plan document here. So uh, what we've done is instead of trying to mirror the language from a collective bargaining agreement, we've pointed to the collective bargaining agreement. So as changes are made in a collective bargaining agreement, um, the, the plan is just pointing to that collective bargaining agreement rather than constantly trying to catch up. Uh, a retirement plan legal document truly is a working document that is e evolving and as soon as we adopt or amend or restate um, it won't be long thereafter that something has occurred in collective bargaining that will cause a change um, but therefore this document in those instances is just pointing to the collective bargaining agreement as the uh, the provisions that we will follow in operation Commissioner Bolter. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this might be more of a question for Amy, but um, wondering if any changes in this document um, reflect any changes in increasing pensions to part-time employees, or and does this make anyone eligible that normally wouldn't be eligible for um, a pension plan? The, the least employee is, is confusing. I, I still don't really fully understand what, what your definition of that is. And, I just want to clarify that we are extending pensions beyond who currently gets them. No, we are not. Thank the you. Uh, the intention is that everybody who was eligible under the existing plan document continues to be eligible Perfect. under the current plan Thank document. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on the motion? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and call this to a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. All right, motion carries. Michelle, thank you so much for being here this morning. And Amy, thank you for your hard work as well. I know a lot of work went into this. And you did have some last minute changes and we should embrace flexibility with those. And we'll try to keep everyone abreast of new changes as we move forward. Um, next item on the agenda is miscellaneous. Is there any commissioner miscellaneous this morning? All right, seeing that I have a couple, I just want to welcome our new members of the Legislative and Human Resources Committee. Uh, we have Commissioner Mast, Commissioner Korndike, and Vice Chair Hennessy who are here with us this morning and for the, the next year. So we welcome you and look forward to very productive with you this morning. Um, I also wanted to mention um, on the KDL board, we have a vacancy in Region 8, that's the city of Wyoming, and we are now accepting um, uh, applications to fill an unexpired term that will end on December 31, 2017. Um, and the deadline to file for that is Friday, January 22nd. So, Commissioner Mast, I'm looking at you specifically. Is there anybody who'd like to apply? Did you that? say KDL? Yep. Yep, we have an update. But, in but KDL. is there one on the building authority, too? Um, yep, we're working on that one as well. Okay, because yep. I, got a, I got an inquiry from one of my mm -hmm. constituents. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll check. The, the yeah, we still have a vacancy on the City County Building Authority, and we had several applicants, and we have been working with the City of Grand Rapids to make sure we have. Well, we had city, someone that the City of Grand Rapids had um, recommended, and then she withdrew her, her well, name. It's the City so. City County Authority, not the not the yep. Kent Building Authority. Yep, it's the City County Building Authority. 
Um, and then finally, legislative priorities. That's a big item that we work on every year here in the Legislative and Human Resources uh, Committee. And we will be um, putting together a <coughs> session in the coming weeks to talk about legislative priorities. I don't believe we've done that in the past, but we thought it would be a good way to get everyone's thoughts and be transparent in that process. So stay tuned for that. So seeing uh, no other miscellaneous this morning, we'll go ahead and call this meeting adjourned until our next meeting on January 26th. I am Kent County. I am Kent County. I am Kent County. We are 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 Kent County. Bayah Ken County. Ami Kent County. Somos Ken County. Masira Kent County. We are Kent County. We are Kent County. We are Kent County. Oh yeah.